Hey everybody, so uh, I hate to do this to you, but something happened, I guess I figured I'd find out what it was about and see if it applies to anything we discuss here a little bit and, uh, you know, regarding taking care of yourself or your community, make, making things you need, getting a hold of things you need, maybe from nature, whatever, but the, uh, this just happened, and um, I like this. I like this channel because it's one of the only like news sort of sources that I can tolerate. Although, because uh, you know she's just saying, she's just saying what they said, <laughs> and I'm just saying what she said. So, uh, yeah, it works. But it's a pretty good channel. So we're gonna find out what she said. I haven't even really watched this one. I don't really think I watched the first ten seconds, but. Let's see. After a weekend of torrential rain, Kentucky Governor Andy Beshear declared a state of emergency today, March 1st, 2021. State officials activated the State Emergency Operations Center to aid with rescue efforts as major flooding was observed. Quote, the impact of extremely heavy rainfall and flash flooding across the Commonwealth led to numerous emergency rescues and evacuations in counties from Okay, so these pictures, I don't know if, I mean, some of these pictures are probably absolutely recent. Sometimes, you know, you just get a picture of a flood so you can show people what it's like, but it looks like, you know, this has happened. I've seen, This has actually even happened um, near where I live before because the rivers will swell or so that could be an issue. People live close to them, which people usually do live really close to water. So, if you are ever building or you're doing anything like that, definitely can consider these types of things in your environment because uh, water is powerful, very powerful. So, if, you, if you're building anything new, it's, it's a definite consideration what will happen if you have an inundation and you want to be prepared for that. But, on the other hand, it looks like these people are either stuck with needing to leave with boats or they would have needed to leave ahead of time leave like they would have to let because i don't think you can really live in a house that's flooded out like this because you're going to lose all your utilities and it's going to probably i mean it's not a safe environment um health wise and stuff because sewage backs up all that water is filled with sewage from the sewers underneath the ground so that's not clean water that's like really bad water in your house now and you don't want that in your house you don't want to be living there you get trapped in the roof or something it's not good uh at all so if you if anybody did have to deal with this which just happens all the time and it looks like it's happening pretty widespread right now and uh this is kind of where that bug out kind of thing comes in where people need to just leave so it is good to have stuff that you can take when you're just leaving and like you might come back probably but it doesn't really matter you're not even going to contemplate that you're just going to leave for at least a while. Call it three months or something if you really had to. Uh, you know. So a little bit of money might be helpful in your bug out, you know, obviously, if that is functional. But you're mostly talking about blankets and clothing. A little bit, at least a couple changes, you know, in a bug out bag and food, medicine, whatever. Fuel for your car, whatever. Something so you can move. Because uh, if it's a flood, certain things you can't, I mean, you can't, you're not going to be able to stay there. Right. It's just kind of like that. Or you're going to get, and then if you get stuck like this, you leave, you're still going to have to leave. So it's like, you might need to bring a backpack or something, you know, whatever. And people have a lot of information about what to put in a bug out bag. It really depends. Depends on your environment, for example. I don't know. Certain things might be more important than others, depending on what your uh, itinerary would be. Having some kind of destinations lined out usually helpful too. A destination might not be that far away, you know. It could be further away, but further away might be better in the sense it might be more efficient for you. Maybe you're just driving to family's house in the next day or something. So. Lots of options, but yeah, the planning is actually probably the key thing. It's really not actually about what you bring. It's about having it planned out so that like if something like this happens, you're not even worried. You're just like, oh, I guess we're leaving. Because this is the kind of situation like that you usually can't, I mean, you can't wait this kind of thing out when there's like three feet of water flooding everything. 
west to east, close quote, said Michael Dossett, director of the Kentucky Division of Emergency Management. Three-day precipitation totals ending March 1st show from Bowling Green to Somerset to Jackson to Pikesville, at least four inches of rain was seen. In some areas, the totals are much higher. Bowling Green saw five to seven inches. Accord Same thing just happened here in Oregon, actually. So these guys got a snowstorm. We got an ice storm. It's pretty much the same. It's snow, too. A lot of ice, freezing rain. And that melted off. We had a swell in the streams and stuff. I have a video, actually, that I'm going to be probably posting before this one of, of the second update of the creek that I took a previous video of. And it swelled even more because we had more rain after the ice storm. So it swelled even more. So we're having almost the same thing, but I don't think it's... I mean, it's causing landslides here, but I don't know if we have actual extreme flooding that I've heard of. There's still a bunch of people here without power due to the ice storm, and it's been like three weeks or something. And then it looks like uh, other places, yeah, they're getting rain on top of the, the ice and snow that they had which already saturated the soil and um yeah they're getting some flooding that's not good to meteorologist ron steve casey county had six inches bowling green had five and madison county had five the national weather service in louisville tweeted quote moderate flooding is expected along the kentucky river and could approach major flood thresholds in some locations, close quote. In Estill County, emergency management officials expect the Kentucky River to crest today. They labeled it as a historical flood. Expect? She must be reading from a previous thing, because I'm pretty sure it already crested from the looks of it. I was worried about this happening in Texas, because I thought since Texas got hit so hard that they would get flooding, and maybe they will, but... I guess with the rain coming on, you know, there's no, probably wasn't follow-up rain. According to emergency management, the projected crest was set at 36.9 feet, less than Yikes. three feet higher than the record high. The stage for major flooding in the county is 31 feet. <laughs> this is Nancy Morgan Hart. So there's five feet above major flooding, flooding. So, or critical, or whatever she said. Uh, uh, yeah, five feet is not water you can tolerate. I mean, that's not just, I mean, I don't know. Sometimes people's basements get flooded, but I think people's basements get flooded when it's like five feet of flooding or 10 feet, and this is 36 or something, said or whatever. So, yeah, that's uh, going way past your basement and into your house, you know. So definitely, I mean, if you guys are homesteading, if you're buying a property, particularly if you're buying a property and it's already got structures on it, or if you're buying one and you're planning to build a structure on it, take, I mean, water is great, you want it around, but take account of where it is and because it will flood and it could, I don't know, that would, depends what size that water is, but it could go multiple feet higher than what it appears, you know, if not a lot more under certain circumstances in the if your topography is in such a way that where you put your home site or your buildings is like within that, that's, that's a big problem. So, and the cities and towns and stuff are often right in these zones uh, where usually there'd be tons of flooding. And the only reason there's not is because maybe they have a little bit of pumps and some stuff like that, but that can all fail sometimes if you just get excessive, uh, you know, saturation, for example, or whatever of the system. So you can't really rely on that like 100% because it's just um, some man-made thing operated by people that are trying to make some money, you know, so that they can do stuff and whatnot. And, uh, you know, jobs, whatever. And uh, some of these systems are rather monopolized, like there's no competition. And they're also like socialized, like it's the government that's running them. So there's no competition at all and they always get paid and so therefore their incentive isn't necessarily to do better to compete um in the market so that they can do better for uh you know so they can stay relevant they're already going to stay relevant so they're 
their motivations are a little bit different. Um, they can they can negotiate in a different way, you know, because that's how it is when you run a monopoly. And uh, yeah, monopolies are usually not known for providing really high quality anything. Traditionally, they're usually known for other things that aren't as good as that. <laughs> if you look into it, I don't even know. I want to get into monopolies and what they are. I don't want to get games. Uh, well, I don't want to say that word either. I don't want to get the stock market crash or whatever is going on over there. Stonks. Stonks. Anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Try not. I mean, it's, it's hard to be in a place where there's not going to be a natural disaster. We were having landslides recently. It closes roads and stuff. They weren't too bad this time, actually, surprisingly. But uh, maybe in some places I don't know about. Historically, there's been some pretty gnarly ones that really closed the road for a little while. And uh, we have, like, a lot of these little cities and little towns and stuff or whatever are connected by, like, you know, two-lane highways. So if you close one of those and the trucks don't go through, that's a real problem. But uh, so far, that hasn't been an issue quite yet. But apparently a lot of people here still don't have power. I think it's, like, 100,000 people or 50,000 people or something, give or take. So you got to be prepared for some of these things that could come from a different angles depending on your environment so keep an eye on that especially if you're moving into property or building anything but also if you're ex dealing with existing structures that uh, are in town or something you're almost more in the way and you should really keep an eye on it then because you're just more likely to get flooded there, for example um, or like if you're in tornado alley make sure that you got a shelter for that, you know, with two exits, you know, in case a tree falls on one of them. So, options. Anyway, thank you guys. Hope you enjoyed.